Greetings. This is Greg Moss from First Class Computer Consulting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import data into OpenERP 7.0. This method that I'll show you first uses the XML RPC uh, connection, and we will write a script in Python to import that data. Now, there's a lot of advantages to using a script over the CSV import. Um, often your customer data is going to be changing and um, it'll be very unlikely that you'll just want to import data one time. You're going to probably end up importing data m several times if not many times over the course of a particular implementation. So having a script allows you to basically structure your in implementation, make sure you're getting all the data imported correctly the same way every time and then if the data changes or you need to update uh, anything in, in the script, you can just rerun it and all your data will come back in. So let's get started. Um, you're going to want to use an editor of some kind. You can use a notepad if you want, or you can use any kind of text editor. I'm using um, a, a, a version called Zeus for Windows. And um, here, uh, we're just going to get started right away with a Python script. And the first thing you're going to want to do is do an import XML RPC lib. And this opens up the library, makes the library available for the XML RPC protocols. Then we're going to import CSV. And that allows us to open up the CSV file that we're going to read our data from. Um, the database or the, the username for the actual installation itself we need to know and you're gonna have to have the password for that user and you'll have to have the name of your database in this case my database name is DB2 so that should be pretty straightforward now this first real command to actually connect um, is gonna use the RPC library and call the server proxy uh, method and then we're going to use that to get the uh, logon information the actual user ID of the person that is uh, or the user like that now um, once we have that we're also going to want to create a uh, and like basically a socket to the object, the actual XML RPC socket. So here we go with that. And you're going to want to use here your own URL, whatever yours happens to be for your installation. So you will probably end up changing your code a little bit there as well. Now we're ready at this point to actually open up our file. Um, I have a, I'm going to do a products import. So um, I'm going to open up the CSV file using this command. And I personally just put this file right inside my server um, directory. So you'll need a path there if yours is different. And I will open up um, that products file and show it to you. So this is uh, the, our product CSV that I'm importing. It's, ba it's basically uh, apparel products, and we have an item number, the product name, and then a price. Because this is a demo, I'm going to keep it real simple. And um, a little bit later in the video, I'll show you how to find out all the fields that you need to import. So that's the file we're importing. And um, once we open it, we want to loop through all the records in here. And um, this command tells us to go through each uh, row of the data. And um, what I like to do is go ahead and print out one of the um, items from the data to make sure it opened up properly and to know which one we're processing. So when I say print row and then in brackets put a 1, that's essentially going to return the what is the second column because this is a, a zero-based array. So zero would be the item number one is the name of the product okay so now i'm going to actually create a, a template to hold this data 
in this data structure and um, we're going to use the name field and a row here and then we're going to load the price and these aren't in any particular order this you can put your you know create this structure any way you wish I forgot my comma there I'm using the same standard price and list price. I'm just keeping the same for now. You know, this is an example, so you're going to want to use your own, you know, data here, and it's going to hap have to have, uh, you know, your own customization. And we will go through once this runs, and I'll show you how you can determine some of these fields real easily inside of the OpenERP interface. Now, most of these fields that you're seeing here are required. If you don't include these fields, you're going to throw an error, an integrity error, because the database does insist that certain fields are filled in. Okay, so this command I'm typing out here is um, the actual command that will execute and write the, the data into the database. Now, um, I made a mistake here. This... Uh, doesn't need to be there and we'll want this to probably be back here okay so in OpenERP you actually create a product template first and then from that template you make your products so the above commands are going to create the template now I'm going to actually create a product from that template Now this default code, this is the actual code that you would use. Uh, most companies are going to have some kind of item code or product code. And so that's going to be our first column uh, from our CSV file. And then this just tells the, um, the system that we want this product to be active. So here we're going to actually execute this to add the products into the database. And this is actually the last line of code that we're going to need. And I'm assuming I probably have made a typo in here somewhere and typing this all in. Um, you're going to want to save. And um, like I said, I've just defaulted it to be an in my server directory here, server, server. So it makes it easy to find all the libraries and execute and so I'm going to call this import example and save it now um, you're going to want to bring up a command prompt and navigate to that directory I'm assuming you know how to do that and to run the script you just type in the the name and hit enter and it's telling me right now I've already got an error in here. So I'm doing this on purpose so you can see um, exactly uh, how you would debug some of this. So it said that uh, it couldn't find my login script. And I can tell I've got a problem here. I didn't uh, 
uh, actually get my server proxy up here. I left this out. So I'm doing this in real time for you so you can see when you make mistakes a little bit of how you can figure them out. And um, in this case, it told me the line number. So if you look here, it'll say line 10. Um, it couldn't find uh, the, uh, there's, there was no attribute login uh, for this. And it was, uh, the reason it couldn't find this login was because this, this command never executed properly. So I made the change and um, now we're going to run it again. And it says D not defined, D, B, D name is not defined right there. And so here again we've got an opportunity to see that this is line 28. So we go to line 28 DB name was not defined. I got it right there. So we're going to execute it one more time. Hopefully this will be the last error. And now we see product ID is not defined in line 35. Um, and there we go. It's, I didn't get an equals there. So these are just little typos. I took this approach intentionally um, to show how you can use uh, the information that's provided in these errors. In this case, it said name, error, name, product ID is not defined. And it gives us the line number, uh, line number 35. So I was able to go right in here and find out where I made my mistake. And we'll run it again. And now we're going. Now what you'll notice from watching this is we're adding about one product every second. It's actually it's adding them in. Uh, this code is clean. There's, it's only 35 lines long total, and inside the loop, there's really not too many ways you're going to optimize this. Uh, the bottleneck is essentially the XML RPC interface. So we're certainly not going to want to import 5,000 records here in this video with this click and buy so slow. So let's stop this script. Hit Control C. And hitting Control C will kill the script. And then at that point, um, let's go and look at the data, just to sh you know show that it's got it, you know it got imported here. So we'll just click on our products, and there's all the data that got imported. Now I'm going to show you real quickly how to find out which of the um, fields you want to import so you can make your own robust import routine uh, from what you've learned in this video. Essentially you're going to want to go to uh, the drop down menu here and choose about open ERP and activate the developer mode. So once the developer mode's been activated you'll be able to open up a product here and mouse over the fields. And so when you mouse over the fields it's going to give you real specific information about the data and you can use this information to extend this import routine and import exactly the data you want to import and create strings for example the manufacturing lead time you might be able to get away with all of your lead times being three days well you can in your script now change uh, this field uh, by you know putting in pro produce delay uh, equals three, for example. So um, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, the next video, I'm going to show you how to get the, around the biggest bottleneck here, and that's that speed. Uh, you saw in this video that it was taking uh, almost a full second for every uh, record to import. And this is a very, very fast machine. As you can see, there's no slowdowns when you're going and clicking around in this interface. Uh, that XML RPC um, method, the protocol there is just very slow of how it's implemented. So in the next video we're going to use a Postgres method of importing data and you'll notice that it's going to be ex 
much, much faster. Um, and you'll just have to follow some guidelines to make sure that you don't uh, introduce any kind of database integrity issues uh, in, your, in, your, uh, in your script. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps everybody.